You are watching In Conversation This Week with Michal O'Hurley. This is Michal O'Hurley, and thank you for joining us for another episode of In Conversation This Week. I'm deeply honored to have the Women, Youth, and Children Minister of the National Unity Government in Myanmar, Burma, uh, join us today. It's not only safe uh, for us to communicate with the National Unity Government, they are under constant threat. If you've watched the newspapers and seen the television, uh, they still are suffering horrific attacks by the Myanmar military junta. So having her with us today is definitely a privilege. Uh, today we have Minister Susanna Lalasso. Uh, Minister, thank you for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me uh, to talk with uh, your interview. And uh, I'm very much privileged to talk about my country and my people no, by the other part of the world. Thank you very much. Well, Minister, you might be half the world away, but you're in front of us right now. So let's jump into these issues. Tell me what happened last year, about a year ago at this time. Um, what happened to the democratically elected government in Myanmar? Okay, uh, let me start uh, with my background. Uh, I was a, a human rights activist in Myanmar since um, military rule. Uh, of course, our country was a military rule by um, uh, 70 years, like seven decades. Um, but um, um, in 2000, um, 2010, there is a like election and hybrid uh, government uh, led by U Teng Sei. Teng Sei is the former general. He became the president and we saw the uh, reform, start reform the country. So all the country is very exciting and, and very much um, eager to, to do the next step for the democracy. At that time, uh, Aung San Suu Kyi was in prison, but 2012, she was released and she became the member of parliament. 2015 um, election, I joined as a member of parliament as a candidate. So I was elected as a member of parliament. I served in the union parliament for five years. And I also served as a women and children committee uh, secretary, the committee secretary. Because of my background and women activists and so um, I really enjoy doing my job in the parliament, uh, you know, um, uh, doing like uh, uh, developing the new law uh, significantly that the country is changing uh, after 2015 election. In 2020, I was run again as a current minister, uh, the, the current affair minister, because we have uh, some major ethnic in the country. So the current is second largest ethnic groups in Myanmar. So we got a seat of the minister. So I won, I won with 85%. So the, 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 the one, a landslide won is very significant. But uh, unfortunately, with surprise, uh, in 2021, February 1, first, the military, uh, they took over the power, they arrest uh, the, the member of parliament, they arrest the ministers and the, the head of state, like um, president and also councillor to Aung San Suu Kyi was arrested. So we start the people revolution, but in the March, um, the military tried to arrest me, so I have to, uh, I have to fled to the border area. So the, the day that they tried to arrest me is very uh, terrible, you know. When I hiding in my, in my uh, friend's house and they try to, uh, 
they tried to arrest me. They broke all the doors and brutally enter into the house and they just try everything. I'm very lucky that I can find a way to hiding in the eighth floor of that building. Actually, I'm hiding in the third, third floor and running to the top of the, the roof and hiding there. So they try to follow me, but uh, they don't know where I am. So I, on that day, very significant, first of March, uh, very that day, I fled to the border area. And um, now I'm here, yes. So you're only one of many parliamentarians who have had to flee yes. the military junta. Aung San Suu Kyi is in prison for quite some period of time now. Other members of the parliament have been arrested yeah. and sentenced as well. Um, tell me about how you came together to form the national unity government. Uh, actually, the people of Myanmar, they are hunger for democracy, you know? Actually, when I run to the, uh, to the body area, I don't know what to do, you know? I'm not sure we are, our country is real under coup or, uh, you know, um, I, we don't know how to find a way. At the time, the people of Myanmar urged to form the government. They told us, we elected you. We um, give you power already. We could not accept the coup. We could not accept the uh, military um, ruling us. So the elected MP, you will be our government. So please form. So the first step um, forming the NUCC uh, in uh, the, the, the with uh, ethnic group and the strike group and demonstration leaders, they form and then they nominate. Uh, the, the member of uh, NUG. So I was uh, appointed as a women, youth and children ministry. You know, in history of Myanmar, we never have this kind of ministry, but the Unity uh, Council, they would like to see what the people are asking for. The, the Myanmar people and, and they, uh, like more than uh, 50 community-based organizations, CSO, they wrote the letter to the elected MP. Please form the government. We are with you. We will back up you. And we, the Myanmar people, we don't need the military rule. We need our elected uh, government to rule us. So we start forming the NUG. Minister, um, you said something very interesting. You talked about it's what the people want. Um, it's one thing to be against the military junta. It's another thing to know what the NUG is for. So tell me, yeah. if you're formed from the will of the people, what does the NUG stand for? NUG is stand for National Unity Government. Because um, you know, um, our country is divided for many years because we have the main, uh, eight main ethnic group and we also have so many subgroups, more than 100 uh, groups. So uh, we have different culture, we have different dialects and, and um, culture and literature, of course. And then the the, Geographic area is very different, you know. We have the mountainous area, we have the like seaside, and we have the plain. So we even uh, have the snow capped mountain in the Kachin area, something like that. So in only in Chin State, we have more than 50 dialects difference because Chin are very, uh, hill is very, you know, remote and one hill did not talk, the other hill 
language, very different. So we have very different background. And sometimes uh, with this different, we come divided, you know. But this time we know that we could not be divided anymore. If we divide it, we could not fight the haunter. So we should unite it. So we named the government unity government. National Unity Government. Yeah. And, and what is the platform of the National Unity Government other than to restore democratically elected politicians to governance? What, what is it that you stand for? Is it food for all? Is it freedom? Is it democracy? Is it a republic? What is your platform for government? To form federal democracy nation, you know, our country is very, as I told you, very uh, significant uh, history that we got the independence from British in 2048. And with the aim of uh, to form the union with a different uh, state, actually we are independent. Before British rule, we have the uh, like uh, Shan nation, we have Qin nation, we have Karen state, we have like Karani state, we have different country with a small group. But we think as a nation, we should have our independence together and then we will form the union because we have very big uh, country like India and China. We share the neighborhood. So we, we should have the strength together we form, but with the military leaders, uh, majority is Burmese. Uh, Burmese leader, they don't want to give the opportunity for the self-determination and also the autonomy to the like coming together the, the, the state. So the revolution start since the independence. So uh, it is very, uh, uh, need to have real federal democracy nation for our people. And last, last uh, in the last history, we cannot even talk about the federal. If you talk about federal, you can be arrested. But now everyone talking about the federal, everyone, even Burma people, they want the federal, they know and they can sympathy uh, to what happened to the border area. So they also ask for the freedom and federal. And being a federal government would mean protecting people of different uh, nationalities, backgrounds, cultures, languages, which brings me to the issue of the accusations of genocide that occurred um, in Myanmar over the past several years. Um, can you speak to that? And what is your government doing to protect all people in Myanmar? Yes, genocide is a, also a long history since the independence, you know. The, like I, during the independent time when the British are back and uh, the revolution uh, revolution government tried to control the country. At that time, the genocides happened in Delta, killed a lot of Korean people, like thousands and thousands of Korean people since then. So my grandparents, great grandparents are among them, the victims. So uh, we have a very, um, a, a very impact uh, from the uh, from the independence and the military is the same military who commit the genocide since the uh, uh, since the independent time so they commit the genocide to current people Kachin people Chin and also Rohingya people and with the spring revolution, they take the advantage and then they kill, they commit so many genocides in the ethnic area 
on the eve of Christmas, they burn more than 30 people in Kurini state, including four children. And um, it happened in last week in Chin state, they killed 10 people. They used as a human shield in operation. After they reach the destination, they kill all these 10 people, including one child. So um, it's happened again and again. And we also talk about impunity. They got the impunity since independence, 2048. The military got the impunity. Um, so many uh, try to get them to the justice, but because of the generals, they never admit what they are doing. So this time, impunity is not excuse. We should bring them to the justice, the murderer, yeah, the killers, yes. Minister, there was a, uh, <clears throat> an American politician and diplomat, a scientist named Benjamin Franklin. And during the American Revolution, he observed that the British took the position that revolutions are always legal in the first person, such as our revolution. It's only your revolution that's illegal. So I'm not surprised to hear that the generals gave themselves immunity. Um, I want to go back to this point so we can move on. Will the Rohingya be protected by the national unity government as much as every other ethnic group within Myanmar? Yes, of course. You know, um, we suffer a lot. You know, we were uh, being the people of divide and rule. The military used so many divide and rule method to the people. Rohingya, they are our nationals. They are our citizens. They are entitled and their country. They are entitled to be in the country with peace and security like others. So um, they, they will be protected. And um, not only this supreme uh, revolution is not only we against the military hunter, we against uh, the racism and uh, we against the discrimination. We against the divide and rule system of country which rooted for more than seven decades. So many, um, many people, they, uh, they apologize, um, Rohingya people and, and current people who were genocide in the last decades. So I think this spring revolution is very important. Not only we against the military hunter, we against the discrimination and divisions, yeah. Well, Minister, I don't know if you're aware, our publication um, conferred the Diplomatic Service Medal with honors um, upon one of your government members. And we did it not only in recognition of what he has done so far and your government, but as a pledge uh, to be kept for human rights being extended to all people. So I congratulate you on that point and we'll check in with you and hold you to it. Minister, I want to go back to something you said about December attacks. Were there two foreign aid workers that were killed in those attacks in Karen State? Karen State, yeah. Tell me about that, would you please? Yeah, yeah. So, um... As far as I, uh, I know, we also have uh, some uh, hearing from, uh, from the villagers, you know. We have the team and we have the local people who come and talk about their stories. The story is very heartbreaking. They are, they are pure civilians who run for 
uh, the conflict. And they, they are with their uh, car, and some are with uh, like trishaw, and some with the motorbike, who are uh, fleeing from their hometown to move to another town. So uh, the, the military, Burma military stopped them in one point, um, we call Muso village in the point that Muso village. And then they collect like about 10 cars with the people of like 34 uh, people there. And um, most of the uh, bodies found out that burn and uh, many were um, like, they are tied with the string and their head is open. So the, the, with the uh, doctor recommendation, they were killed with the gun, shoot at their head. And some are not killed, but they burn alive with, with the other's body. And, and um, when the, like, uh, the border guard force, hear that uh, the military, they are doing burning people. So they, uh, they went there to rescue, but these four uh, BGS soldier were killed also. So all together, like uh, 40 people were kill, killed in that side. So the killing is very brutal and very humane, inhumane. So the, the, the whole world is very shocked. We are very shocked. And uh, this will bring to the justice. We are trying to do it, yeah. Well, Your Excellency, I'm a bit concerned here that Europe is caught up in its own problems right now with the threats on the Ukrainian border uh, to Finland and Sweden. Um, we see the rise of new dictators and authoritarian regimes in Africa. Uh, issues in Sudan and Yemen continue to fester. Syria is under attack. Migrants are drowning in the English Channel. Are you concerned at all that the world's eyes will turn away from Myanmar and what is happening to your people, not just in December, but almost on a daily basis? Yeah, I'm worried. We are worried because new things are happening in the world and a new kind of terrorists and also authoritarian are come up to the wall. It is very worrisome. So we should maintain the democracy. We should maintain the freedom of the people to protect the human rights is very important. One country violate human rights can affect to the whole world the whole world can suffer. So um, like uh, when uh, we have our strike in the country, we also strike for Sudan because Sudan also happened the coup. So the, our people, our young people, they, uh, they walk on the road and they, they strike for the Sudan because um, our struggle is not only for Myanmar. Our struggle is democracy reform and democracy resume in our country, in our region, especially, you know, ASEAN. ASEAN is very wavy. ASEAN and also the whole world. Well, Minister, I, I think that's what uh, Dr. Sauce's words touched our awards committee so much is that he wasn't yeah. really struggling um, for the Myanmar people, but uh, universal human rights. And certainly when democracy is degraded and it's allowed to be degraded in one place, it's degraded everywhere. Yeah. Minister, my sources tell me that as the women, uh, youth and children minister, you often visit the front lines to make sure that you're aware of the situation firsthand. Um, 
does that bring you into conflict or into danger? Yes, uh, I used to visit to the front line because um, I would like to uh, I would like to be with my people, yeah, my people, and I would like to see the real situation in the ground, and I would like to help the people. So I used to visit to the front line and visit the hospital, seeing the like maternity care works and also schools, meeting with the school children and if they are safe. So yes, some of my trip were danger. One time, my, uh, when I travel with boat, uh, the boat uh, in front of me was shoot and drawn into the water. So we have to turn back and then uh, have to choose another way. And during the Christmas time, I visited to the, some frontline area. I spent there for 10 days. And um, I saw the people are very much happy during the Christmas time. But of course, I also saw the some uh, fighter jet on our head. But um, I'm thinking that if something happened, we have to run. I'm ready to run, you know, but nothing happened on the on that day but when i come back the next the next uh, the next week the the place that i visit uh, the 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 uh, the hospital was attacked by the air, air strike now the first time is not very impact but second and third time is very very bad and the hospital was totally destroyed and i wonder of the, victor, the, the, the landmine victims who were uh, stayed there and got the, uh, uh, got the me medicine there. I, I'm really worried for them. I'm still thinking about them, yeah. I, I know that when I was in um, Southeast Asia, um, we still have problems with Vietnamese farmers being maimed and, and killed by landmines um, 40 years after the end of the war in Vietnam. Are landmines of a particular threat to the people in Myanmar? Yes, very much. Yeah. The military hunter used a lot of landmines in the ethnic, in the border area, yeah. Against their own people. Yeah, yeah. Kill their own people. And, and even their own soldiers are impact because of the landmine. The former uh, soldier, the military um, serving as a soldier, when they got hit by the landmine, they lost their legs. So um, as far as I know, in Chaoji, there's uh, so many villages that uh, the, the, the former military uh, combats who lost their legs, they stay together in that village. The whole village, yeah, they, they lost like one, at least one and two, yes. We have the same problem in Europe and Georgia, where the Russians have used landmines or in Ukraine, uh, not only do landmines dis indiscriminately kill children, animals, farm stock, people, uh, but soldiers alike and demining operations, Ukrainian soldiers who have tried to demine the area have been fired upon by snipers. So it's an ongoing issue. Minister, how does your government support itself financially, um, being that the junta has superior military forces and equipment? Yeah, um, so our government is uh, like uh, stand with the donation from the people of Myanmar. And the second is supporter uh, from the diaspora. So our support is not enough, 
But the people are very kind each other. They, they support each other. They give, uh, they give, they share. And um, like um, last, last year, we can uh, support more than 50,000 pregnant women with the cash transfer. And we also like support uh, the, the women who were sexually assaulted by the military hunter, the soldiers, uh, with the counseling, with the shelter, with the uh, lawyer support. So we have all together like uh, 200, more than 200 women are in, in with our support. And we support so many uh, like first aid kits and also we call mat maternity kit uh, for the pregnant women who are hiding in the jungle. They don't have any hospital or any uh, clinic in the front line. So we send these kids uh, to the front line. So um, many organizations, they are working with us. So, and on the other hand, we have the human resources, uh, uh, you know, our CDM, uh, civil disobedience movement is very powerful in our country. In our ministry, we have 600 staff CDM. They are in every state and division. They working with us, working for the people of Myanmar. And we form the women network in each and every town. So the women network are very strong, very supportive, and they are very uh, tactful, uh, giving the information or helping, helping the 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 like IDPs are uh, the who running from the can, uh, conflict. So that's how uh, with the, this system we are running our programs. So as a government, we are helping people. The military hunter, they are not government. They are just terrorists, uh, commit crime, crime to the people of Myanmar. Now the people know, the world know, the world need to take the action as soon as possible. Minister, how many internally displaced people do you believe there are at this time? Oh, Millions and millions of people. You know, in uh, Karini State, Karini State, the population is 300,000 population. Now, 200,000 have to flee, have to uh, run for their life. It means more than 50% of people in Karini State, they have to run. They become IDP. Yeah. So in uh, along the Thai Burma border area, I uh, uh, with the estimation maybe two million of IDP people, and plus uh, the 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 border of of course uh, the Rohingya people are in uh, Bangladesh, and the 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 border of China and India all together, yeah, it's millions of people. And what support are you getting from international bodies like the United Nations, um, UNHCR, the Red Cross? Are you getting the support you need to sustain those people? You know, uh, Mr. Mihal, the UN system is very slow. They have the bureaucrat system and on the other hand, they are not open to work directly with uh, NUG. So they may work with the other CSO or NGO, I don't know. So for us, uh, we don't get any, uh, any collaboration with them. It's a shame. Well, it certainly allowed the crisis to get worse. In your estimation, are things worse today than they were um, last February when the violence was supposedly at its peak? Excuse me, your question, please, again. 
are things worse today than they were last February when the uh, military junta was supposedly using violence at its peak? Yes, it's worsened because I told, why I told like this, the, the, the military use airstrike every day in the whole country. Not only the, the ethnic area, they bomb the center of Myanmar. Magui Division, Sagain Division, thousands of people had to flee because of the airstrike happened in that area. So we never think that the military hunter will use the but they are using. They're against the international law. They violate the international uh, rules and disciplines. They so, are just terrorists, yeah. Minister, you must have one of the most challenging portfolios. What is life like for most women, uh, youth and children in Myanmar right now? Are they bearing the brunt of this conflict? Yeah, the situation is not better. Uh, and the first is they have to afraid for their life. Even in the people who live in the city or the people in the like in the village and in the border area, they all have to afraid for their life. Now the military hunter, they arrest more and more people and they torture and kill. Uh, the, the, the people of in, who reside in city also not safe. Uh, the second is COVID, you know. COVID is um, very danger in our country because we don't have enough facilities. We don't have the, the medical persons because 90% of medical persons, they are CDM. They are not working with the military. They are working in the uh, border area uh, with the with the ethnic groups. So there is no military persons. So the the, the COVID wave is very ter terrorism. And number three is lack of income. The economics of the country is collapse. Will be collapsed in in this year very worse situation. Yeah, so human security, economics, and also that the human dignity, everything is not in the agenda of the hunter. How is food security at this time? Yeah, when the, when the before the coup, we have difficult, in the food security because of the COVID. But the government is, at the time, government was providing like basic food to the needy uh, families. And also, we also have like the, the goodwill organizations who would like to share uh, like cash or food uh, to the people who are in need had everything gone after the coup. So um, the FAO, they, they estimate that half of the Myanmar people will be staffed in 2022. And what can be done to change that? Does it require the UN to finally recognize the NUG? Are any states recognizing your government? and? How can civil society organizations change that outlook? Of course, the first thing is to recognize NUG is very important. As soon as the UN and uh, the, the other country recognize the NUG, we can get like uh, support for our people. We can help the people of Myanmar. We can work for them, not like this. Like now we are depend on 
the, the donation and so and so. So we need to take immediate action to the SAC, to the military, stop their brutal violence uh, to the people of Myanmar. And um, the, the ASEAN, they are also very, uh, not, not very much active. They need to speed up with their action to Burma military. How is the Burmese military continuing to get lethal supplies that they are using against their own people? Are their arms coming from Europe? Are they coming from Asia? How are they sustaining their combat against the ordinary people of Myanmar? Yes. Um, now, most of the country using the arm embargo to the country, our country. It is good, but still the backup countries are still with them like Russia and China. And I'm not sure about India. India is off and on. Yeah, I think the Europe country are stopped selling the weapons because of the arm embargo but they still have the other country like North Korea and Iran, maybe, I'm not sure, but they still have lethal weapons to kill their own people. Um, Your Excellency, we've only got a few minutes left, so I want to do two things. Um, what prospects do you have of other countries recognizing the NUG? Has anybody done it? And is anybody on the verge of recognizing your government? So recognition is, you know, I'm not sure why they are delayed in the process because maybe their law, their parliament, the process, I'm not sure. Um, many countries are with us. Uh, they support us and like, we open uh, the offices in the country of like United Kingdom and also South Korea, Australia and, and um, Czech Republic, so and so. Now we are going to open some more offices in this year, but you know, uh, with their own country, they have a, a critical issue for recognition, controversial issue. But the people of Myanmar, we could not wait, you know, until the recognition because we need help because people are dying every day, every day with a brutal attack by the uh, military. No, surveillance, they are not combated, they are surveillance. So uh, we, I would like to urge the international community and UN to recognize NUG as a government and stop, stop the, the, the SAC. What they are doing now is very inhumane and it is uh, uh, against the, the human rights. And uh, uh, they, they deny the humanity. So they should stop and walking toward to the federal democracy formation of Myanmar. And we also need the reform of the military because for, for today, we don't have military. We only have terrorists to the, our country, yeah. Excellency, do you think it's possible to reform the military? 1948, 73 years ago, you gained your independence and the military has had a heavy thumb on the nation ever since. Do you think it's possible that anybody in uniform today can be retained in a government that's responsive to the people? I believe that it is possible because in 2019, we tried to reform the military in the parliament, you know, 
we have some discussion and also um, uh, also the framework, uh, the, the develop the framework for the reform. But you know, the parliament, we have 25% of military representative. Of course, they deny, they give nay to, to the proposal. Uh, but this time, the en enthusiasm of the people of Myanmar and they themselves, they are very much against the military rule. I think this is the good time to start thinking about the military reform. Otherwise, we could not do again. Minister, we have to go, but I want to ask you, in every conflict throughout history, women, youth, and children have been particular victims. What can the world do to support you and your ministry in ensuring everything from access to prenatal care, to schools continuing to function, to the basic protections of women um, to feel safe in their own homes, free from the fear of rape, abuse, mm. neglect, and starvation. What can the world do? How can they contribute? Yes, uh, first is to, uh, to stop SAC, to stop the military. Uh, their, their, their brutal attack uh, by the giving the pressure or uh, sanction or stop funding to them. And uh, please work with our ministry to help the, the pregnant women and lacting mothers and also uh, the, the, the youth who are in need of education and not uh, they could not uh, stay at home. They have to run in. And children, they need the education and they need the nutrition. So we have um, most population is youth and children. So please work with NUG and uh, walk through the funding agencies and work with us to save Myanmar people. And Minister, give me a website where people can learn more about the funding agencies, the information, reliable information that's not part of the hybrid warfare against the Myanmar people. Yeah, yeah, I will. I will send you the website. M-O-W-Y-C-A.com. And you can reach to our page because the people of Myanmar mostly use the, the, the Facebook page. Uh, Ministry of Women, Youth and Children Affairs. Yeah, with this logo. This is our logo. I see. You it. can find the flower. Yeah. And Minister, I'd like you to stay safe. I'd like you to prosper in your work. God knows the people of Myanmar, especially the women, the youth, and the children, need your help at this time. We all look forward to the restoration of a democratic government. I'm sure we'll be talking to each other again soon. Uh, Minister, convey my best wishes to your people. Yes, I will. And thank you also for inviting me and talk to your people. So I hope that the world will not forgotten the Myanmar people and be with us and stand with us for the democracy federal new nation. Thank you very much. Thank you, Minister. This is Miholo Hurley, and we've been talking to Susanna Halalaso, who is the Minister for the National Unity Government in Myanmar of Women, Youth, and Children. As she said, they expect thousands of people to starve to death this year unless we help. The government needs recognition. They need our assistance now through aid organizations who are cooperating. And we need our governments to continue to put Myanmar on the forefront of the agenda so that our fatigue of crisis 
doesn't allow us to forget those halfway across the world. I'm Mihol O'Hurley, and you've been watching In Conversation this week. Thank you very much, and we'll talk to you soon. Stay safe.